Joe here from Smoke Break Barbecue Club and the Man Bear Meat Company. Today I'm going to be doing some pork tenderloins, often confused with the pork loin, which is the larger, uh, comes from right up in this area, right? Uh, the back strap, if you will, of the hog. Today I'm going to be using the smaller inside pork tenderloins. So first, before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about dry brining. And now you might think brining, right? What does dry brining mean? When you think brining, typically you think, you know, uh, large cuts of meat and um, you know gallons of water letting that soak with spices overnight for you know days and in, in some cases and waiting you know for that to really absorb some of that salt and end up with that nice juicy tender piece of meat so that's kind of exactly what we're doing here today but without all that unnecessary added water what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna salt the outside of my pork tenderloins and then through the process of osmosis, which is just a kind of a big word for uh, that salt drawing the natural moisture, the natural juices from our pork tenderloin from the inside to the surface of the pork tenderloin. And then over a period of time and through the process of diffusion, which is just another big word for uh, that meat's going to soak back in that concentrated brine. So that salt, it's going to draw the moisture from the inside of that pork tenderloin. It's going to mix with our salt. It's going to create kind of this concentrated brine. And then after a little while, that pork tenderloin is going to reabsorb that moisture back inside of it. It's kind of going to reshape and break down that protein, act as sort of a natural tenderizer as well. So I like to do mine just a little bit differently, and I'm going to show you how I do that here today. We're going to salt these, we're going to add some seasonings, I'm going to vacuum pack them, we're going to let them sit a few hours, and then they're going to go, go to a uh, wire rack, they're going to rest another couple hours, and that's when we're really going to get that diffusion or reabsorption of our natural brine that we created from our uh, juices and our dry brine today. So um, I'm going to get these pork tenderloins out, and we're going to get to work. seasoning and I got a little bit of rosemary in there a little salt that's about all I need now uh, you can get creative though you can do some garlic cloves you can do some onion uh, you can do some slices of lime slices of orange it'll be your pork tenderloin so make it your own at home right uh, anyway next thing I'm gonna cut this out of my vacuum bag put it on my wire rack here and it's gonna go back in the fridge for about one hour and I'm just gonna be looking for it to start to reabsorb some of that brine that we created with our dry brine here in the bag. So once we let this rest, they should absorb that moisture, be nice and dry, and they'll be ready to head out to the grill. This 
spent about an hour, hour and a half, went ahead and fired up some charcoal here in the Weber. Uh, today I'm going to be cooking with a two zone setup. Basically that means I'm going to push all of my charcoal off to one side so I have a hot side and a cold side of the grill. I'm also going to add one little chunk of mesquite wood right on top of that charcoal just to get a little bit of smoke on these pork tenderloins. Um, once I get all that set up, I'm going to go ahead and close this lid, wait to see that smoke start rolling, and then I'm going to put those pork tenderloins right on the grill grates. these things off the grill, brought them back inside, sliced them up, got them over to my plate, hit them with one more little drizzle of that rib candy, and you guys know the rest of that story, right? So to recap what I did here today, got my pork tenderloins, trimmed them up just a little bit, they didn't need much, and then um, one thing I didn't really touch on that I'd like to right now is kind of rule of thumb with the salt is a half a teaspoon per pound. Now. I, I didn't talk about it because I never really measure that out. I just make sure I get a good coating on the outside of the uh, whatever cut of meat I'm using, rather it be a tenderloin like today or a, a pork chop or a ribeye or something like that. And this dry brining method really does translate well to whatever cut of meat you use it on. Um, and, and of course for larger cuts of meat you can let this sit longer. Um, after you do this a few times, you don't really have to time it out, you kind of just know once you see that moisture start to, you know, that moisture that pulls out from the salt, once you see that start to soak back in and that meat kind of dries out, doesn't really dry out, but you get that nice kind of a pellicle build up on the outside, it gets kind of tacky and all that moisture goes away, then you know these things are ready, it's done, they're brined and they're ready to go to the grill or the smoker. Um, and that's what I did here today. The one thing I do different is I vacuum packed them up use a little bit of Craig's all-purpose seasoning and feel free to use whatever uh, seasonings, whatever extra flair, flavors you would like to use there. Uh, vacuum, vacuum pack them up, put them in a Ziploc, whatever, let it sit for two, three hours, um, and then pull them out. And the most important part is let them sit uncovered in the fridge for another hour and a half, two hours. I landed about an hour and a half today just because that's how it worked out for me and that's kind of when like I said, I had that pellicle forming, I had all that moisture gone, and I knew they were ready for the grill. Um, other than that, guys, hit these with that pomegranate cranberry habanero rib candy. Got a nice shine on them there. Uh, check that out at texaspepperjelly.com. One other thing I'd like to mention is, if you're not into the heat thing like I am, they do offer a, a pretty good variety over there of all sweet, no heat rib candy. So you can get peach, you can get uh, black cherry grape they have some other flavors mango pineapple um, check that out I might be wrong on some of those but I think I got it uh, they got some other flavor flavors there nonetheless check out the rubs check out the other sauces the ketchup they just came out with I'm gonna be using that here shortly um, all in all not a lot to it after you get that dry brine done get these things grilled and then it's time to eat so thanks for watching this video today as always and Smoke them if you got them. All you need, but um, it, it does it uh, today.
Got him to my plate, hit him with another drizzle of that cranberry. Uh, there I go, messing that up again.